G'day and welcome back to RC Model Reviews, another whiteboard video and today I'm talking about diversity. Can you see that? Can't really tell if it's in frame or not. But anyway, diversity is what the subject of the day. And what is diversity? Well, diverse means differing, different. You know, um, you have a selection of things if it's diversity. And when we're talking about diversity with radio controlled models, we're usually talking radio control receivers or FPV receivers. We're talking about receivers, about radio links, reliable radio links. Now, you'll recall I did a video recently in which I talked about polarization and these little rubber ducky here uh, antennas. And I said that to get the best signal, you, both antennas must be lined up. But of course, as you know, sometimes when you're flying along, you do a bank and the antennas don't line up anymore. So one of the first uses of diversity in RC model flying was when we used to use these rubber duckies for our FPV. And you'd find that as you banked in a turn, your FPV signal would disappear. So we had diversity receivers. We had two receivers, one with a horizontal antenna, one with a vertical. And so as your plane banked and one antenna lost signal, the other one would pick it up and you'd get a more consistent video performance out of your equipment. But um, the reason I'm wanting to do this video is because EA Sheen recently launched some new video goggles on the market. Uh, I think we've all seen them. A lot of people have reviewed them. I recommend you go and have a look at RC Shim's video on this. He's done a really good, everyone else seems to have gone, but like that Wizard 220, what, these are the best things since sliced bread. These are fantastic. Everyone should have one of these. Mario's taken a slightly more critical view of these video glasses, and I think it's worth looking at his video. He does some really good review stuff, so um, he's my competition, but I think he's really good, so I'm giving him a plug. Now, the reason that the EA Sheen goggles are worthy of comment is because they have diversity, but they don't have Receiver diversity. Hang on, what's the difference? Diversity is diversity, isn't it? Well, no, it's not. Let me draw a little picture here. Um, in typically with FPV, this is what you have. If you've got goggles, have got diversity. You have a situation like this. We have one, and that's the symbol for an antenna, this little triangle. Like that. That's an antenna in electronic parlance. So we have two receivers, receiver one and receiver two. They go down here, and then you have the output goes off to your screen or your little screens on your thing. So what happens here is there's a switch. So this can switch to there or to there. And like most receivers, there's a thing called RSSI. It's the Received Signal Strength Indicator. It just means there's a little voltage on here that tells you how strong the signal is. So if that little wire comes out here, let's put it out there and out there. And I've, I've already had a DIY, a DIY project on this channel for building your own diversity controller. So if you want a bit more background, go and look at that. I'll link to it in the description of this video. It's a really cheap, I think it was two bucks or something to build a, diver a diversity controller for um, FPV. So this is the RSSI. And this voltage will be higher, the stronger the signal strength. So all we've got to do is go over here, have a little controller circuit, and it looks at each of those voltages. And depending on which one is getting the strongest signal, it'll operate this switch. So if receiver one's getting a stronger signal than receiver two, then it will make sure that the signal goes through that way. If receiver two gets a stronger signal, it will switch so that it connects up this way. So either way, your glasses are going to get the strongest, best signal from your two receivers, from whichever of those receivers is working best. Now that's great. That works really well. It's proven technology. But, but what they've done with the EA Sheen goggles is something different. They've produced, well, they've got, res, uh, sorry, antenna diversity. How does that work? Well, it's a little bit different. Let me see. Hopefully this will erase because, oh, look at it. I need a new whiteboard. This doesn't erase properly. It's, oh, never mind. Moving right along. No complaints here. With, here's our antennas. The idea is we have one receiver. Receiver. And we have a switch up here somewhere. So this comes into there. This comes into there. And then the output goes out of there. The concept being that Whichever antenna gets the strongest signal will be switched into the receiver, but how would you know? I mean, the RSSI comes out of the receiver, right? So how are you going to know which receiver is stronger? And you might think, well, hang on a minute, radio control transmitters do this. They have antenna diversity. They seem to work okay, so why wouldn't FPV work? Well, a bit of noise going on here. Why wouldn't FPV work with receiver, or sorry, antenna diversity? What's the difference? Well, there's a big difference. It's the difference between analog and digital. Now, if we look at this, this our FPV systems are analog. It's, a, it's just, you know, there's no, there's no bits and bytes. It's just a variable signal going in and out. So 
let's assume this is a um, radio control transmitter for a moment. Let's assume we're looking at digital. Because we can do antenna diversity with digital really easily. And it works really well. Because that's why most of our modern 2.4 gig receivers have two antennas. They have antenna diversity. One receiver, two antennas. How is this going to work? Well, what happens is these, if we look at the signal that's coming down through these antennas, it's actually like this. We have a packet of data. And in here is all sorts of zeros and ones and zeros and ones and zeros and ones. And they have a bit here which is called the preamble. Excuse my writing. Preamble, right? Oh, that's terrible, Bruce. No one can read that. Anyway, preamble. Preamble just means the bit that comes before. So in this preamble, it's just a whole, it's just a little pattern of stuff. What these receive, what these receivers do, it's really clever. It's built into the chipsets that are used. So first thing that happens is the receiver looks at as the preamble starts coming in, it looks at this antenna and works out what the RSSI is through there. Then it switches to that antenna and works out what the RSSI is through that antenna. So during this period here. And this is time, if we look at this axis, is time. It has enough time look, by looking at the preamble, switching backwards and forwards, to determine which antenna is going to be best to receive the packet. So once it's made its mind up, which antenna gives the best signal, it'll stay switched onto that antenna, whichever one it is, until it's received the whole packet. So it has enough time in advance. It just has a sneak preview, basically, which antenna is working best. Oh, we use this one. And then once the packet has been received, it will be waiting for another packet. It'll go back, and as soon as it gets a preamble, it will start doing that check again. So every packet, before every packet of data, which is where all your servo positions are, it checks the preamble to see which antenna is now getting the strongest signal. Works really well with digital. No problems at all. It's all built into the chipset. But when we get to analog, not so simple. Here's our analog system, right? We've got the same setup. This is the signal we get from our FPV transmitter. It's not a packet of data. It's, it's a whole lot of varying stuff. Now, it is broken up into what we call frames. So there's a frame, there's a frame. But it's, it's, there's no preamble. There's no signal to look at and make sure we've got the right receiver antenna. So what will happen here is if we start working on one antenna and we switch to the other one, then if the other antenna that we switch to is not getting a strong signal, we get a drop out in the video. So we can't just arbitrarily switch antennas because we could have partway through a frame, we've got a really strong signal on one antenna, the other antenna is really weak. The receiver will not know which antenna to use until it switches backwards and forwards, and you're going to get a glitch. You're going to get a glitch. Now, um, it can be a small glitch, but it still can be a glitch. And you could synchronize it to the what they call the blanking pulse and all sorts of stuff like that. It's very complicated, but it's really not as practical as it is with the digital system. So what, and I, I, this is why I wonder, EA Sheen or Banggood or whatever didn't send me a set of these goggles to review. I mean, I wasn't surprised. I'm not upset. I'm not disappointed. Um, they did send me the wizard and I panned it. And so I guess I got on the bad books and I probably won't get anything else from Banggood again. But um, I would really love to have had a look at a set of these goggles to see how they've implemented this antenna diversity. Now, the people that have tested it have said, hey, oh, the video is really good. It's really good. But the funny, I haven't seen anyone test it in a busy environment, a noisy environment, because one of the problems is that with analog signals, if you've got a lot of strong signals on adjacent channels, it can really screw up this antenna diversity thing. It can really screw it up bad. So it needs to be tested in the field. You need to actually go out there. I want to see people, you know, four or five people flying at once and just see what happens with that EA Sheen antenna diversity. Now, the thing is, they may not even be switching antennas. Uh, I don't know. In fact, one of the simplest forms of antenna diversity, which so someone said that they'd taken a look and they it hinted that this was the case. What they do is they they do this. They have an antenna and then they pass it through an amplifier, which is this is what an amplifier looks like in circuit terms. And then they just join the two outputs together and go into there. The idea being that the stronger and well, you're getting signal from both antennas and it's being fed into there. So if this is getting a strong signal, well, you'll get a strong signal. If this is getting a strong signal, you get a strong signal. If this is you know, so, so the, the strong signal signal overpowers the weak signal. Oh, so easy, isn't it? Why didn't anyone think of that? Problem with that is it's really bad in some cases. In some cases, this is awful because antennas don't just get signals independently. What happens is you've got a signal coming in here, bing, 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 bing. Bing. I'll just write that down in case you don't know how to spell it. It's spelled Bing. Um, signal comes in. It hits, it's always going to hit one antenna first. Always going to hit one antenna first. So you're going to get a signal appearing on this antenna. It'll go up and down like that, right? That way. And then that signal will hit the next antenna. So you get another up and down like that. But the problem is, if we look at those two things like this, here's time. And here's our first signal from the antenna. Woo, like that. 
The second one will be delayed because it doesn't strike at exactly the same time. So if our antennas are, say, half a wavelength apart or a multiple of a half a wavelength apart, then the second um, signal will look like this. And what will happen? Well, they'll cancel out. So in fact, if you've got two equally strong signals on these two antennas and they're just joined together through an amplifier like that, then they'll be antiphase and they'll cancel out. So when you should be getting a reasonably good picture, you get nothing because the two signals are cancelling. I mean, that can happen. This is one of the problems with very simple diversity systems. They often they don't usually work very well, except when you've got the digital system. On analog, they can be pretty crap. And I know some people are saying, well, why don't you just tie the antennas? Why do you need these amplifiers? Just tie the antennas together. That'd be so simple, wouldn't it? If we just ran this antenna down like that, like that, and we joined them up like that, then the stronger signal will just, you know, go through overwhelm the smaller signal. Yeah, but there's a big problem there. <laughs> if you look carefully at this, you've got two antennas in parallel. So if this antenna gets a, a little signal like that, half of it's going to go in there, but the other half's going to go back up here. So you're actually going to get half the signal strength that you should be getting. If you had one antenna, you get twice the strength because you're not wasting half of it by trying to re-radiate it through the other antenna. And you still get the phasing problems. If, they, if the wave is half a phase out, then it's still going to cancel out. So this sort of, it's not, it is diversity, but it's not active diversity. It doesn't select. This is what you call passive diversity, whether it's got an amplifier in there or not. And it's not very good. It doesn't work very well. Even the 2.4 gig systems have a switch, so you're only ever connected to one antenna at a time. And as I say, with analog, yeah, yeah, because you've got to check antennas and that could happen in the middle of a frame and you get glitching and things, don't know. And the other problem with, with passive, um, with some of these antenna systems is that if you have a really strong signal, it's being amplified as well. If it's off band, it can actually cause all sorts of problems down here where you mix your signals. You can get what you call intermod and cross mod products where the two independent signals mix, each up, up, mix up with each other and you get interference in lines and crap. It's quite a complex um, situation. So I would love to have seen those EA Sheen goggles so that I could speak with some authority. I'm just, I have no idea what they've done in those goggles, but they say antenna diversity and on an analog system, antenna diversity is a really, really hard thing to do in a real time system where you're looking at the signal as the antennas are switching around. Um, I've never seen it done really well. Maybe EA Sheen have done a good job. Maybe they've, they've you know, I'd look silly with, you know, um, egg on my face because they might have done a really good job, but I don't know. I don't know. And all I can think of, they didn't send me one. Maybe they didn't want me to take a look at this. I don't know. So there you go. That's basically a quick look at diversity, why we have it, why we need it, what it does, and why it's really cool. Um, if you've got any questions about diversity, if it's something I haven't covered or something that, that you disagree with, because as I always say, I do tend to simplify things a little bit to make it easier to understand. This may, sometimes what I say isn't 100% technically correct, but it, it's to try and make it easy for you to understand that the overall uh, implication is, is usually right on, but the details may be slightly out just to make it simpler because we don't want to get boards and boards of mathematics and all sorts of crap like that. So this is the simple stuff. There you go. Um, as I say, questions, comments, usual place. Thank you for watching. There'll be more whiteboard videos coming up pretty soon. Spring weather, it's crap. Can't fly today. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.